Well, good morning. It's uh, August 27th, Thursday morning. It's about 8 20, 8.25. Uh, I'm in Saldotna, Alaska. I'm at a campground that's, uh, the name of the campground is uh, Higher Ground. And as you can see, um, it's 160, 150 acres, just a beautiful campground. It's 80, it's 48 degrees here in Alaska, Seldana, Kenai Peninsula. In uh, Arizona, rumor has it, uh, Phoenix, it's about 91 degrees. So I've got uh, a message for you today from James chapter 1, verses 2 to 7. Uh, good morning to those of you from the uh, Tennessee, Alaska, Phoenix, uh, Texas, a uh, number of different areas. Um, this is James chapter 1, verses 2 to 7. If you're facing a problem, a challenge, if you're struggling with uh, something that... Uh, is difficult for you it could be call it an adversity uh, maybe it's an obstacle maybe you got a disappointment in your life maybe you're going through a rejection uh, maybe uh, there's some kind of persecution involved so what we're talking about today from James chapter 1 verses 2 to 7 is the right way to respond to challenges the right way I'm gonna give you six right ways to respond to obstacles to suffering to adversity uh, every now and then I'll give you a quick uh, look of my uh, path I'm on I'm on the higher ground uh, campgrounds uh, in the woods just enjoying a walk James chapter 1, James chapter 1, verse 2 says this, Consider it all joy. So that's your first right response to your challenge. Whatever your challenge is, you, maybe you don't have much money. Maybe you've got a health problem. Maybe uh, there's a marriage difficulty. Consider it all joy. Not that the problem is joyful not that the challenge is joyful challenge can be very very painful very very difficult but the bible is says change your perspective <clears throat> james 1 2 says consider it all joy uh, my brethren brothers and sisters when you encounter various trials notice it says when it doesn't say if you will encounter challenges, obstacles, problems, adversities, trials. So the first thing to do is adjust your perspective on your challenge, whatever your challenge is. Maybe uh, you're just uh, full of anxiety. Maybe you've got a lot of stress over different things. It says, consider it all joy. So the first thing is to rethink your thoughts. See your challenge, see your suffering the way God wants you to see it. Consider it all joy. Be aware that God is working ahead of you. That's how you start to consider it all joy. Your suffering, your problem, your challenge, your adversity. Rethink. Now, start thinking there is a joyful outcome. So the joy is knowing that God is in charge. The joy is knowing that someone far bigger, far more powerful than you and your challenge. Whatever that challenge is, that difficulty, that adversity, God is bigger than that. 
So when you consider it all joy, you're considering and rethinking that God is actively working on your behalf. So whatever your circumstance is, consider it all joy. That's number one. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials. Number two. Second suggestion, this is a faith test. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. So what you have here is when you see your difficulty, when you're facing your challenge, maybe you just don't have enough money. Maybe you've got cancer. Maybe there's family challenges. Maybe, maybe there are struggles. What's going on here is God is going to use this situation to test your faith. Now remember these two words. God tests, Satan tempts. God tests, Satan tempts. Realize that whatever situation you're in, whatever obstacle, whatever suffering, whatever trial, whatever adversity, that God is using that difficulty to literally test your faith. So the text says, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. So the second right way to respond to suffering or challenges or difficulties is see that difficulty as a testing of your faith. What that means is God is trying to stretch. God, God is trying to grow you in that battle, in that suffering, in that situation that is challenging for you. When the stress starts to rise and you feel completely overwhelmed, uh, recently I had a discussion with someone that involved some very difficult uh, family challenges, family dynamics, and it was it, it was just the unknown, the unexpected, the, the problems that were there required a lot of faith because you could not predict the outcome. So God is testing, Roger, will you trust me? He's testing. Trust me, Roger, on this one. Roger, as you face this cancer, Roger, as you face this problem, as you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, fear no evil, for God is with you. He's testing you. Now remember that everyone is going to have suffering. It's not if, it's when. So number two, understand when you have difficulties, number two, it's a faith test. Now, that difficulty is not evil. It's not evil from God's point of view. It may be evil. Somebody may do you wrong, but God is not producing that evil. God is trying to use that evil situation to grow your faith, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Now the concept here, the endurance, is patience. So when you have a suffering, a challenge, a problem, an adversity, what's going on is God is trying to test your faith to grow your patience. Now think, answer, answer this question. How many of you are patient? How many of you just have a Job-like patience? You have this capacity to be slow to anger. You don't get bitter. You're very, very patient. Think with me for a moment, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. 
So always remember that in your difficulty, in your challenge, God is testing your faith. So it's a faith test. That's the right way to respond to suffering. So if you're feeling rejected, if you're getting having a disappointment, if life is challenging, there's a good chance the faith test is God is testing your faith to grow your patience. Lots of us need to discover patience. We want out of our problems. We want to avoid our problems. We don't want the difficulties of life. Nobody wants them. But Job was the most righteous man, and Job himself lost it all. He lost his kids. He lost his, his, his wife. He lost all of his uh, land as a rancher, farmer. He lost it all, but God later gave it back to him with much more. So the challenges is considerate joy. God is at work. It's a faith test. And number three, that God, the right way to respond, number three, is with more patience. So when you have a challenge, when you have a difficulty, whatever that is, maybe you don't have much money, whatever it might be, maybe you have a health problem, maybe there's a marriage issue, maybe there's a family issue, maybe there's something with uh, the children or the grandchildren. Number three, what God, the right way to respond to that problem is more patience. So when the car breaks down, God is going to use that to try to get you to respond with more patience. The hardest thing, it seems, is most of us are impatient. Or if we're patient, God is wanting us to exercise more patience. So with your children, for example, you get frustrated and tired. Why won't they learn? Why won't they grow? Well, God is wanting, number three, the right response to a difficulty is for you to be more patient. More patient with your children. More patient with one another. More patient with that irritating neighbor. More patient with your spouse. Uh, I notice my daughter, Charmin, is uh, listening. Maybe God wants my daughter, Charmin, to be more patient with her dad. So the right way to respond to suffering, to challenges, to obstacles, to disappointments, number one, consider it all joy. God is at work. Number two, there's a faith test going on. The test is that God wants to grow your patience. So the third right response is, Roger, be more patient. Be more patient with your brothers and sisters. I just climbed to the top of a hill, and I'll give you a quick overlook of the valley down below. All these trees that you see, they don't grow overnight. All the beauty that God has created, it just doesn't happen all of a sudden. Be patient. The Bible says that patience is a very, very strong attribute. Job was one of the most patient individuals you can imagine. So if you're at work and things are not going the way you would like them to go, how do you respond to challenges? Number one, consider it all joy. God is doing something. Therefore, I can view this positively. Number two, When I begin to feel anxiety and stress, this is a faith test. God is testing me to grow my patience. 
And number three, God wants me to give more patience. It says this, let the endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. I'm in James chapter 1, verse verse 4, and let endurance, think, about, think of the word endurance, think of the word patience, and let patience have its stable result, mature result, its strong result, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. The right way to respond the right way to respond to difficulties is to be more patient. So how do you get there? You get there by, number four, asking God for help. So it starts off with a perspective. I see this problem. God, you're at work. I, I know it's a, it's, it's, I, I'm feeling pain. It's a difficult challenge. I'm feeling stress, I'm feeling anxiety, I'm suffering, but I'm going to consider it all joy because you're at work. So number four is, how do you respond to difficulties? What's the right response? You ask God. You ask God for help. Verse five says, but if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all generously and without reproach and it will be given to him. So you have to trust that God is working. There are days when you can't see it. You, you don't know God is working. There's this challenge that just keeps getting bigger and bigger, over consuming you, you just, you can't figure it out. But God is working and now you turn to God. Now you ask God, any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all generously and without reproach. That means God's not going to be upset with you. You need help. You need wisdom with your, your challenge. Ask God. He'll give it to you. Ask him. It's amazing how often we go through life and we're not asking God for help. Whatever your challenge may be. Whatever it might be, whatever trial, whatever tribulation, whatever difficulties, we're not asking God for help. How many times have you just flippantly asked God for help? That's not what I'm talking about. I mean a serious request. There are plenty of examples in the Bible where people begged God for help. You see, a lot of us need to see ourselves more as beggars, spiritual beggars. You see, a lot of us think we're pretty cool. We're not. We're depraved. We are broken. Blessed are the poor. That poor, blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall see the kingdom of God. Poor in spirit means broken. You, you don't have anything good to offer God. Your best is not going to get you anywhere. Look up there on the trail, you can see a rabbit right in the middle of the trail. See it? Just now walking up on it. I'll stand for a moment. You see, ask God to help. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all generously. God will give you wisdom in that difficulty and it will be given to you. All right, so now number five. The fifth way, the fifth right response to obstacles. The fifth right response to obstacles is don't doubt God. Number five, don't doubt God. Verse six, James 1, 6, but you must ask in faith without any doubting. For the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. So there is this, in your challenges of life, whatever they may be, there is this perhaps an opportunity to be tested. 
And what's being tested is your faith. Can you trust God? Can you trust that God is bigger than you? Bigger than your problem? Trust him. Don't doubt. Don't be wishy-washy. Don't be like the waves, the literally the surf of the sea, go in and out and flip and flop and change. Don't doubt. What you have here in this passage is a reality that all of us struggle with faith. And God is trying to produce in us a character of strength where we don't worry, we don't stress, we trust. Hardest thing in the world perhaps sometimes to achieve, but don't doubt. The God of the universe is taking good care of you. Even in your most difficult situation. All right, so let's quick do a quick review. James chapter 1, verses 2 to 7. There's six right ways to respond to difficulty, to challenges. Number one, start off when you have this problem, this starting to suffer, whatever this trial, uh, an obstacle, consider it all joy. Now, the, the problem may not be enjoyable, but it you can bring joy in the equation because you know that God is working on the problem ahead of you. Number two, that the challenge probably is testing your faith. Recognize it. Change your perspective. This situation is a faith test. Am I going to trust God for the finances? Am I going to trust God through my medical challenge? Am I going to trust God to go from A to Z, whatever that may be? And number three, the third right response is patience. God wants you to exhibit in this time of suffering, in this time of difficulty, more patience. More patience with yourself. More patience with other people. We get real short, don't we? We get real bitey, snappy. We can get mean. God wants us to be patient with others, patient with ourselves. That means, number four, that we need to ask God for help, for wisdom. Ask him and he'll give it to you. Number five, the fifth right way to respond is when you ask God, don't doubt him. Ask in faith without any doubting. God is at work on your behalf. And the sixth right way to respond to God. The right way to respond to suffering is to trust God. Listen to this. For the man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, being a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. See, if you're restless, stressed, anxious, panicking, then you're not trusting God. You're trying to trust yourself for your own solutions. You're trying to do it your way. But what God wants you to do is to be stable. See, a lot of people are creating more problems because they're unstable. Their insecurity, because they're not trusting God, is creating more problems. So their current problem is not faced with trusting God and more patience that God is at work and is going to produce a good outcome. So insecurity breeds insecurity. So if you're walking through life and you have a challenge and you're starting to feel anxiety about the unknown or the unexpected, then you got to back up and say, I'm not trusting God. Where's my faith? One of the most beautiful things about God is he's sovereign. 
everything you're going through, everything you're going through, God is one step ahead of you. Or probably to say accurately, he's, he's a thousand steps ahead of you. And he is blazing the trail for you. You may not know it, you may not be aware of it, but you need to trust God. So the sixth right response is be stable, be secure. As you face your problems, the right way is not to be filled with anxiety and being wishy-washy. The right way is to trust God and be stable. I find it a challenge. Uh, humans are so wishy-washy, but God doesn't want you to be wishy-washy. Flaky, we can be really flaky. We can be hot and cold. We can vacillate, and he wants our faith to be stable. He wants patience to be stable. He wants us to walk through life not knowing all of the outcomes or what's going to happen on the path. Just as I now went through a trail that I'd never been on uh, in the woods in uh, Alaska, uh, trusting that I would make it back, that this trail would lead me back to camp. So I literally went up a hill, got to the top, came down the hill, and now I'm walking back up. Those of you that are still enjoying this path, I'm walking now back up to where I'm staying for a couple of weeks. I'll show you my little cabin. We've given you six right ways to respond to obstacles, to adversity, to suffering. Number one, consider it all joy. The problem that you're encountering may not be joyful, but if you realize that God is working ahead of you, that there will be a good outcome, that God always, all things work together for good, Romans 8, 28, to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Number two, the second right response to obstacles or disappointment is recognize it's a faith test. God is testing your faith. And number three, he wants you in that obstacle to be more patient, more patient. So I'm now headed back. This is my little uh, bungalow, my little cabin that I'm staying in up in Sildotna, Alaska at higher ground. So more patience. God wants you as you're growing in your patience to ask him for help. That's number four. Ask God for help. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. God will be generous with you. He loves to give wisdom. And number five, don't doubt God. One of the big tests of faith is no matter what happens, I'm going to trust God. I'm going to trust him. Good, bad, or what, whatever the outcome is, I'm going to trust him. This is our bathhouse, and there's cabins over there. This is the sports fields, snack bar, dining hall. So don't doubt God. God is at work. And the sixth way to respond to God is to be stable. In your difficulties, in your adversity, God wants you to be solid, stable. He wants you not to be double-minded. God wants you to be strong, not weak. 
So it's a beautiful projection of how this works. All of our problems, whatever they may be, consider it all joy. See your problems as a faith test. Number three, that God wants you to give more patience into that problem. He wants you to talk to him and ask him for help. He doesn't want you to doubt him. And he wants you as you face your problems. God wants you to trust him. And by trusting God, you will find anxiety going down. You'll find stability in your, in your soul. You'll find less anxiety. So I'm going to read the passage again to you, see if it'll all make some sense to you. James chapter 1, starting in verse 2. Consider it all joy, my brethren, brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, that endurance is patience. And let the endurance, patience, have its perfect results so that you may be perfect, mature, and complete, lacking in nothing. But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it'll be given to you. But you must ask in faith, without any doubting, for the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed, driven and tossed by the wind. And verse seven, for that man who is flaky, wishy-washy, for that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord being double-minded, unstable in all his ways. I don't know if you have challenges. Uh, there's a good chance that you do. Uh, we all have challenges. I'm thinking right now of uh, Vicki. She's got some cancer challenges. I'm thinking of another individual that's got some legal challenges. Thinking of a, another teenager that's got some challenges. Thinking of a church that's going through some major problems. Remember, you gotta, you gotta come back to God. You gotta ask God. You recognize you're in a faith test. Ask him for more patience. Don't doubt him. See that problem that God is at work ahead of you and consider it joy, not pain. Yes, it's hurting, but see that God is at work. Don't doubt God and be stable. I'm going to take a moment and just uh, pray for you. God, give us that ability in the quietness of this moment to say thank you for the way that you care for us, for the unknown, the unexpected. Uh, God, the family that uh, has got the legal problems that, uh, uh, that I shared earlier, just give them lots of wisdom. Uh, for Vicki as she uh, battles cancer. I ask for your healing touch. God, we all need wisdom in one way or another. Give us that ability, God, to recognize that there's so much we cannot understand, that oftentimes we walk through life blinded. We're just blind, and we need your help. Give us that ability to trust you, that patience is a big deal, not anger, not not hate, not meanness, but patience, which includes mercy. God, we give you the day. It's a good day. It's a beautiful day. We say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings on you. Have a good one. See ya.